Hello, Calling Up community. I'm Claudia Alec, and today we are responding to Republicans denying a history of supporting racism. So we're not debunking in this exercise of what we're doing right now. Cognitively, when you repeat the lie, your audience, they actually end up remembering the lie more than the truth that followed it. This is usually because it's a lot easier to say a pithy, memorable mistruth than it is to actually give good, solid information, which is why this video, unfortunately, is probably going to be about 10 minutes long, I anticipate. However, at the end, I will be providing a short, pithy response that you can do on Twitter. So, the um, this particular argument is always being done either by bad faith communicators, people who are deliberately misinforming you so that you will believe something that aids them and gives them more power, or they are being spread by people who were misinformed and want you to believe the thing that they believe and cannot discern between good argument, good information, accurate information, and bad argument and bad information. In either case, you are not served by going back and forth in the comments, debating them, because that only gives your audience the impression that these are questions in contention. And do not debate actual history and things that really happened. Um, don't repeat lies. I'm going to have good responses for you later. Let's actually get into the hot nonsense that um we've been shared that's been shared. So a few days ago, Tom Cotton, we're going to use his tweet as the example. We could use many, many tweets. I have been responding to this particular lie for over a decade online. So Tom Cotton, he is the U.S. Senator for Arkansas. So the U.S. Senator for the state of Arkansas, he decided that he was going to publicly publish this series of lies. I'm going to repeat, I'm going to read them all out loud and then we're going to break it down real fast. Okay. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are helpfully reminding Americans that the Democrats were the party of slavery, secession, and segregation. By contrast, the Republican Party was founded on and has always stood for the natural equality of all men and women. Wow, that's a whole lot of lies. Tom Cotton has filled this with a whole lot of lies. Let's break it down. Okay, so Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were at the debates. They're both Democrats, and Kamala Harris was actually calling out Joe Biden. He has a history of being, um, he's actually real good at this. It's great. He's real good at reaching across the aisle and collaborating with Republicans. So like back in the day, he was reaching across the aisle, collaborating with Republicans um, because he was um, against desegregation. He was resisting desegregation. And Kamala Harris was like, yeah, thanks for that. I was only in the school that I was in because of desegregation. So, hmm. um, so to say that they were helpfully reminding Americans that the Democrats were the party of A, B, and C, that's actually not, that's, they weren't saying that at all. They didn't mention slavery or secession. They didn't go back that far. They were actually talking about things that happened within the, within the lifetime of most of us, within the lifetime of Kamala Harris being a child going to school, within the lifetime of Biden, OMG, how old is Biden, um, actually voting to put policies in place that would have, disallowed her from this kind of stuff. Okay, so that's what they were talking about. So the first lie, the first tricksy piece of rhetoric that Tom Cotton is doing is saying, this thing that happened, actually it was this thing. Let's talk about this thing that I just lied and said it was. First lie. Let's talk about the second. Well, actually, this isn't a lie. Democrats were the party of slavery, secession, and segregation in the past. They sure were. So that's true. However, it's kind of skipping the entire history of the Southern strategy and the parties realigning. And I will not do a good job of breaking down that entire history. But like, basically, like LBJ was like, if I recall correctly, he was totally a Democrat. And then he became president. And then he was all like, oh, maybe I'll make America a little less racist because, you know, this Voting Rights Act thing. Feels like that might be a good idea to help the country continue functioning to allow all of the black people an equal right to vote, or at least put something in place that gives them an equaler right to vote. Because we still don't have voting equity, even to this day. Oh my gosh. Okay, so they were 
But then in the 60s, they realigned. And then the folks who were the Southern Democrats were like, yo, our policies are like all about making sure all of the power is maintained and held by white straight men. So you're jacking us up. And then Nixon was like, yo, you like that racism, son? Let me hook you up become Republicans. And so like everybody became, they all became Republicans. And then the Republican Party was the one that was like, you know what, we are totally going to use the um, strategy um, to increase political support among our white voters by like appealing to racism and stuff and saying, you know, low key coded, horrible, horrible things about brown people. And you know, just making sure that we maintain our policies that keep the most wealth and power and freedoms in the hands of straight white men. Hmm. So that's what had happened. And that history isn't listed in this tweet at all. What this tweet says is that Democrats were this, therefore they must have always been this and are always this. That doesn't make any sense because he says by contrast. The by contrast does two things. It suggests that if one person is this, no one else can be that. That's not how it works. Republicans support racism. They have supported racism today. They've supported racism in the past. Democrats have supported racism hardcore in the past, but they've also supported racist policies in the present. Like we started this conversation off talking about Biden, a Democrat, supporting or, or not supporting desegregation. And he was working with a lot of Republicans at the time. They were collaborating. Yay! No. So that's a thing. Um, so that, by contrast, that's not how it works. It turns out two things can be true at the same time. Demo Republicans can be racist and Democrats can be racist too. So if you go like, Democrats are the racists, there isn't the racists. It's racism and racist policies. And that's what we're talking about and trying to dismantle. And actually, it's more helpful for us as Americans who are alive today, experiencing living in the country right now, to talk about the policies that are in place right this minute. So let's keep going. Because they're also doing, Tom Cotton's done a lot in this tweet. He's also suggesting a narrowing of the frame. Now, how can I explain this super quick? Ah, I was just um, having a tweet session with Lizzo. <laughs> love Lizzo. And so we were going back and forth and she was like, oh, um, it's the N word, right? So Republicans were trying to claim that like, if you don't say the N word, you're not a racist, right? So like that's narrowing of the frame. If it's saying, hey, this racism is the things that make, that make racist things happen. It's all these stuff. But I'm going to just say, if you say the N word, that makes you a racist. I don't say the N word. Therefore, I'm not a racist. But that's narrowing the definition of what the thing really is so that you can make an argument that you're not that thing. And that's that's a lie. OK, so that by contrast, the Republican Party was founded on and has always stood for. That's not true. The Republican Party has not always stood for the natural equality of all men and women. Well, actually, the Republican Party has not always stood for the equality and equitable distribution of power and resources between every single man and woman who lives in this country. Let's say that again, because it's true. The Republican Party has never supported um, or stood for equality and equitable distribution of power and resources between all men and women on in this country. Hmm. So that's a gigantic lie. But what does this natural equality mean? Does that modifier, is it meant to suggest that um, any kind of interventions that are creating the circumstances of circumstances of equity are unnatural. Is that why Tom Cotton most likely doesn't support the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment? I'm assuming he doesn't. Because of my knowledge of what his party, the label, the identity he likes to go with, um, what he stands for, because he stands for the Republicans, um, I'm assuming that he would be against the Equal Rights Amendment because it would be creating an unnatural equality of, you know, pay and freedoms and access to resources between women but and men. But I don't know. Who the heck knows? So here's the question. How do you respond to this garbage, right? Just took us 10 minutes to break it down. First, screen cap it. Always screen cap. Folks like to d delete and deny the evidence. So screen cap it, but do not retweet or give people a path to go back to that bad, bad data. Don't go into their conversation and have a conversation with them, right? You can respond within and without. So you can screen cap what they're doing and then do a reply that says, hey, 
let me state the truth. Republicans have a history of um, have a have a current um, track record and a history of supporting racist policies. So you're lying to us. Then you can um, suggest to the audience, this is someone who is giving us bad information. We should mute and block them. We should not listen to them because they lie to us. And then you give a link to good information. And that's my suggested next step. It fits in a tweet. I think that it's great to like respond within their tweet. But then again, that person might delete the bad info. So sometimes what I will do is I will screen cap and then and then do uh and, and do my own tweet with their screen capped bad information just to let folks know, hey, this person's spreading bad information. You should mute them because they don't want you to be well informed. Um I don't know if these will be useful next steps for you. I would love to hear from you. Let me know if you have better ways of responding to this in like Boom. A, a thing that's not a back and forth, just a boom. Um, let me know how you like the more resources I gave, because, you know, my breakdown of the Southern strategy was pretty sketch. But I think it had some, it had mostly accuracy and it. it was informed by a lot of research and reading. And then um, I would also love just to hear from you if you try this out, if it works. All right. Thank you, Calling Up Community. I will see you later.